Welcome everyone, this is Greg Rock, and I'd like to welcome you to the latest installment of our Meet the Author webcast series. We're thrilled to have Dr. Matthias Kirchmer with us, longtime friend of BPM Institute and a well-recognized expert in the industry, talking about his latest book, High Performance Through Business Process Management, Strategy Execution in a Digital World. In addition to being a frequent contributor of BPM Institute and a well-known author, uh, Dr. Matthias is also the managing director and co-CEO of BPMD and uh, advises practitioners and organizations on how they can implement BPM to realize their strategy and enhance the performance of their organization. And so, uh, Matthias, your latest book just came out in May. I know it's been a very busy, busy summer for you. We appreciate uh, you taking the time out to come and talk to our members about the main concepts and things that you'll be sharing in the book. Um, I also wanted to thank you in advance for being generous enough to share a free chapter of the book with our members and to extend them a discount. I'll talk a little bit more about those things at the end. Uh, but I'd like to um, start off just by turning things over and having you uh, share with us some of the major concepts that you have in the book. So I'll turn things over to you at this point. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Greg, and uh, as usual, uh, it's a pleasure talking to you and here yeah, the BPM Institute's uh, community. My uh, uh, newest book, High Performance, Through Business uh, Process Management, uh, basically uh, discusses the role of uh, uh, BPM in our uh, digital world and uh, how important it is uh, to uh, make strategy happen to uh, execute strategy in our digital world. Okay, sorry, I had a speaking issue moving uh, the slides uh, here forward. Uh, the book is uh, the third uh, edition of uh, my uh, high performance uh, books, but it's uh, over 70% uh, of uh, new content. And uh, uh, one thing that is uh, very special uh, for that book is that uh, you can basically read every chapter uh, by itself. Uh, and at the end uh, of every chapter, there is a bottom line that refers back uh, uh, to the different sections of the chapter so that you can really uh, deep dive and read uh, whatever you are especially uh, interested in. I have been, uh, as Greg mentioned, in that uh, field of uh, process management uh, for well over uh, 20 years, uh, of course, uh, advising organizations mostly in the uh, manufacturing field, but also in uh, different uh, other uh, industries. And I have always kept my uh, link to academia published uh, 11 books, uh, many articles, and uh, also teach regularly at the University of uh, Pennsylvania, Widener University, and uh, a few others. And in uh, such a book, I always try to uh, combine my uh, practice experience and what I see working uh, with my clients and uh, the newest uh, academic uh, thinking and uh, figure out uh, what really makes an impact uh, in uh, a practice and uh, what is still uh, a bit on the horizon, uh, maybe not uh, mature enough uh, for the, the current business uh, situation. You see here an uh, overview over the uh, topics of the book. I don't want to go uh, in uh, detail through that. But uh, I have basically uh, looked at uh, process and process management uh, from uh, different uh, points of view, from a technology point of view, from a people point of view, from an organizational or governance point of view. And I have then uh, examined uh, what does it mean uh, to apply uh, process management in uh, different uh, context uh, areas, in uh, in the enterprise processes, in the merchant processes, or in small and medium uh, uh, enterprises, uh, and uh, conclude with some uh, thoughts uh, about uh, what uh, business engineers uh, can learn from jazz musicians. 
And the uh, key of the book, as uh, mentioned, uh, is here the topic around uh, uh, making things happen, making strategy happen in uh, our digital world. And uh, to examine that, it's worth uh, to take a step uh, back and uh, see how uh, digitalization is uh, defined. And uh, if you look into literature, it's defined uh, as the combination of physical products people and processes to the Internet of Things. So products, people and processes come together through uh, here the Internet of Things or the Internet uh, of uh, everything. And uh, to give you a little example what happens if you forget a, a component, let's look at a, a company from uh, the machinery uh, uh, industry. They uh, uh, notice that they have um, significant issues in their final assembly line. It uh, takes uh, way too long. Uh, they get uh, uh, complaints uh, from clients. Uh, and uh, they start an uh, Industry 4.0 initiative, automate everything, having uh, assembly robots, everything uh, uh, connected. Uh, so really what you would call uh, the factory of the future. But not much uh, has changed. So everybody uh, uh, was uh, confused and how can that be? And uh, now we have uh, here those digital solutions uh, and uh, we don't get uh, much out of it. And uh, uh, it turned out uh, that their major issue was that uh, many parts uh, were missing. And then detailed analysis of their processes showed that uh, the key issue was not even in the process, but in their master data. Uh, here, uh, uh, bills of materials that were not uh, updated uh, uh, correctly led to the planning and uh, procurement uh, of uh, the wrong uh, part. So their process issues were not at all uh, in the final assembly, but uh, in their materials uh, requirement uh, planning and uh, the related uh, master data management uh, processes. And that uh, shows uh, when uh, you just achieve here a great uh, uh, integration of uh, uh, products and products and people and have everything linked together, but you have not thought through the entire end-to-end -end process, you run into issues. And that's uh, uh, what uh, the book uh, discusses. And uh, that's why uh, we uh, make the case uh, that uh, DPM, uh, process management, really has to become what we call a management uh, a discipline, uh, like to talk about the discipline of value-driven DPM to focus uh, on the outcomes, and uh, uh, that's uh, the uh, discipline that moves strategy into people and technology-based execution and does that fast and that minimal risk. So BPM is all around organizing how you make uh, your strategic uh, goals uh, happen. So it's not uh, just about technology, it's not just about uh, people, it's about bringing them together in the right way so that you get best benefits uh, for your organization. And uh, I discuss uh, very much in detail uh, possible uh, uh, technology impact, uh, possible uh, uh, architectures uh, to make that happen. But in the same way, I think about uh, the people enablement. How do you get the people uh, up uh, to speed? How do you manage uh, that uh, change? And uh, I can say that in uh, most of the situations, when issues come up, uh, that's not because of the technology. The technology can always be fixed uh, by some uh, uh, good and capable engineer, but uh, if people cannot deal with that new environment, then you really have an, uh, an issue. And uh, uh, the technology develops so quickly, so the bottleneck in really achieving the next level of performance will not be the technology, but uh, the people. And the better you are in the people enablement, uh, the uh, further you will uh, move ahead. And that's uh, another point I stress in that uh, book. And, and, and guys, before you, move, before you move on there, could I also ask you to help folks understand um, 
the connection between value-driven BPM and digitalization. digitalization sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, uh, a, a great uh, point, and um, uh, I uh, have just written an article about uh, uh, BPM as value switch for digitalization. And that comes back uh, to the example I gave. If, if you just uh, put digital technologies uh, in an uh, uh, organization and uh, uh, connect them uh, through the Internet, that uh, will not uh, really uh, uh, bring uh, you the results you are looking for. Only if you think about how can you uh, adjust and change and improve your processes through those uh, new digital technology and through that integration, uh, you will be uh, uh, really successful and you will realize the full business uh, potential of uh, such digital uh, initiatives. And uh, uh, we uh, made uh, uh, here last year uh, uh, research with over 200 organizations uh, worldwide, and uh, uh, that showed uh, very, very clearly that uh, organizations with a higher maturity level in their uh, process management capabilities also get more value out of uh, their uh, digitalization. And as a basis, as a basis uh, for that, you need, of course, uh, to know your processes. Uh, you need to collect and manage uh, uh, that uh, knowledge, and uh, that can be uh, really industrialized. Uh, so if you want, you can uh, apply the digitalization concept also to process management uh, itself. And uh, uh, that's more than just using a repository. It's about uh, building what I call a business uh, process uh, factory, where you have uh, process components that uh, can be uh, uh, assembled real-time ad hoc as needed uh, for uh, the definition of uh, specific uh, uh, processes. Other processes can be uh, stored more on a long term and then uh, uh, reused in other areas of uh, the company. So to think exactly how to uh, manage uh, the, the knowledge uh, around your processes how to uh, manage uh, all the information models uh, around that is a very uh, a key of a uh, functioning uh, process discipline and is important for the technology as well as for the people side of uh, process management. When uh, the topic of BPM comes up and is uh, discussed in uh, conferences uh, uh, or even in academic environments, there comes often the argument that, well, uh, BPM is something from uh, yesterday when uh, we uh, were building uh, very transactional businesses. Uh, nowadays, when everything changes all the time, when we need uh, 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 innovation become part of the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, business, uh, that's no longer the time of BPM. But nothing could be uh, more wrong uh, than, uh, than that. In contrary, Process management is the discipline that helps you to make innovation become part of your day-to-day -day business. And uh, that happens in two ways. Uh, on one hand, uh, uh, innovation, uh, BPM drives innovation directly, the so-called process innovation. And uh, uh, lots of the big innovations of the last five, ten years are pure process innovations. Uh, uh, here, eBay, they didn't invent the auction. They just invented the new process of making it happen. Amazon didn't invent the book, but they invented the new process uh, of selling it, and so on. So process innovation comes directly to the uh, BPM discipline, and in addition, the same management discipline helps you to organize your innovation process that makes sure that you keep uh, ideas flowing, that you evaluate them, that you uh, uh, bring them uh, to uh, prototypes and then uh, uh, at the end uh, uh, to the market. I've uh, been working with several organizations in the uh, research and development uh, area. Uh, PPM uh, can make a, a huge, huge uh, a difference uh, in uh, 
improving quality and uh, uh, quantity uh, of uh, the innovation, innovation activity. So BPM innovation, uh, another important uh, topic uh, handled uh, in the book. And uh, directly related to that, another uh, interesting uh, 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 topic that I'm convinced will become uh, more and more important, that's the handling of emergent uh, business processes. That means uh, business processes that uh, cannot be defined at the beginning till the end because the uh, uh, following steps depend on the result of previous steps. That's uh, uh, often uh, the case in uh, uh, research and development uh, uh, environments uh, when the next uh, working steps depend on the results uh, of uh, the uh, previous uh, ones or when you handle uh, here uh, uh, big natural disasters that have not happened uh, the same way and uh, well now with uh, 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 all those uh, storms in Texas and uh, Florida and the Caribbean, uh, we have seen that you can plan some things ahead, uh, but then uh, uh, there's always something that happens you have not thought about, and you have to define that uh, uh, the next steps of your process ad hoc. And there exists also some approaches how to do that, uh, also how to support that to uh, some of the, the new uh, systems uh, or uh, even uh, artificial intelligence uh, approaches. So uh, that whole topic around emergent uh, processes also uh, discussed uh, in uh, that's, uh, a new book. More and more uh, organizations also use uh, the uh, BPM as a management discipline, not only for one country and uh, uh, locations within uh, that uh, country, but uh, they use it in an uh, international uh, environment uh, to uh, really uh, uh, think and uh, align uh, what uh, they do in their global uh, operations. And that uh, uh, requires, uh, again, some very uh, specific adjustments on uh, how do you organize uh, your uh, PPM discipline? But if you do those uh, adjustments, uh, so that uh, you really uh, have in mind that there are different legal systems, different uh, geographies, different cultures and uh, education, different languages, all that influences how you organize your processes. But uh, if you build your discipline around those factors, Again, uh, you uh, can be very powerful in aligning what you do, in uh, uh, reaching uh, synergies where that is possible, but uh, being close uh, to the client and uh, the market uh, where this is uh, necessary, and uh, process management helps you to make all that uh, happen. There's often also the, the discussion uh, if uh, uh, process management is uh, something for the big organizations or you can also use it in uh, small and medium organizations. And uh, I have to say that uh, uh, based on uh, my experience that uh, small and medium uh, companies can benefit tremendously from uh, the, the impact of process management and of course they cannot uh, afford the, the very costly automation uh, solutions uh, they don't have hundred people who can uh, uh, work in a uh, uh, process uh, management uh, organization but they don't uh, need that uh, the fact uh, that uh, there's kind of a natural integration uh, due to a smaller size uh, simplifies many things. Uh, normally you can get uh, uh, faster uh, decisions and then you can apply the same uh, uh, concept to make uh, uh, things uh, more agile, to comply uh, with uh, legal uh, regulations, to innovate uh, where it uh, matters so that you can uh, in a, a small organization get uh, those uh, benefits even faster and uh, you can use uh, process and process management for uh, 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 a real organized uh, scale uh, uh, up uh, uh, initiative so that you can grow uh, your company and move it uh, to the uh, to the next level uh, so I uh, discussed in an uh, entire chapter 
uh, the importance of uh, establishing even a simple CPM uh, discipline in a, a, a small and medium organization to give it the chance uh, to grow up. And uh, last but least, uh, uh, I uh, discuss uh, towards the end uh, of uh, the book uh, what uh, process engineers can learn from uh, jazz uh, musicians uh, that uh, uh, you need to make uh, uh, innovation part on, of uh, what you do, just like the jazz uh, musicians uh, include improvisation in the way they uh, play uh, their different uh, tunes. Uh, that you need to be able to change roles and to lead and to follow, just like uh, a jazz musician plays his or her solo, then uh, uh, takes a step back and supports uh, the next uh, musician who leads the next uh, part of uh, the tune. And that's uh, how uh, a, a company has to work uh, nowadays. Uh, yeah, you know, a, a traditional firm uh, functions like a symphony orchestra where the uh, conductor hands out uh, the sheet music and then everybody uh, plays exactly what they are told. But uh, that requires uh, that you uh, know uh, what uh, uh, everybody should do. However, in our uh, today's uh, business environment, in our digital world where things happen fast and change uh, all the time, there is not one person who knows all uh, uh, the things that happen. There happen things that you have not uh, thought about. So you can only handle that if you uh, have always the right uh, people with the right expertise lead uh, that step and uh, uh, move things uh, forward. So you need a very different uh, dynamic, uh, very similar to such a jazz uh, performance. And that's uh, in a nutshell what we can uh, learn from uh, jazz musicians. I have, of course, also uh, a few uh, endorsements uh, for the uh, current, uh, here, the third uh, edition uh, that we have discussed uh, of the book. Uh, uh, I have uh, many more endorsements uh, also for previous uh, editions. Uh, uh, I'm uh, quite a bit proud that the very first edition that I brought out of uh, that uh, book, I think it was in uh, uh, 2008, and that was, uh, I think, the last book where Michael Hammer uh, wrote an uh, endorsement, uh, so uh, you can still uh, read that uh, also here in the third uh, edition. Uh, I kept it uh, in, uh, included, uh, also uh, here Bill McDermott, uh, the CEO from uh, SAP has done an, an endorsement, and now you see many practitioners have followed and it shows really that the concept of value-driven process management of PPM as a real management discipline has made its way into practice and has become a powerful reality. Thank you very much. And with that, uh, back to you, Greg. All right, Ms. Matthias. Matthias, thank you uh, so much for that. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, very important uh, concepts in the book, and I appreciate you giving our members uh, kind of a sneak preview of what they can expect there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, we've also got a free chapter uh, for everyone uh, that they can download from the uh, webcast website. And I think... Um, you know, Matthias, I think over the years, one of the things that I've appreciated about your insight is that, you know, you are able to give folks very practical advice uh, for things that they perceive as a very complex environment and uh, giving them uh, an opportunity to uh, move forward. And uh, one of the questions I had for you is, you know, there's a lot of folks that have spent uh, months and even years, you know, modeling some of their processes internally but they haven't uh, been able to move forward. They, they haven't started improving processes or even automating processes. A any advice you, do you have for folks as they start to move to that, that next level? Yeah, that is uh, a very, very good point. And I uh, uh, see uh, uh, that uh, uh, more and more uh, uh, often that people create tons of process models but they don't get uh, any value out of it uh, at all. I just uh, talked uh, some uh, 
uh, months uh, or now it's almost maybe a year ago with the electronic uh, consumer electronics uh, uh, company and uh, they told me that uh, well uh, they have now a great repository over 600 process models all in their modeling standards exactly as we discussed them they have only one problem uh, last month not one person looked at them <laughs> and I thought and said, well, uh, then uh, you have a real, uh, very big uh, problem because if you create something uh, that nobody looks at, uh, uh, then it's not an asset and that was a waste of time and uh, people got really upset and said, well, now we have done what you told us, uh, 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 we, we have created the transparency and nobody wants it and said, well, uh, uh, people don't sit around and uh, uh, have nothing to do than uh, figuring out what to do with your process models. If you want to create value with them, you need to define uh, how to do that. You do need to define usage scenarios. How do you use process models to train people? How do you use those models to improve uh, uh, efficiency, reduce cost or reduce time? How do you use those models to understand uh, how to apply uh, your ERP system. There exists uh, 15, 20 uh, typical uh, uh, usage scenarios and you need to define them in a real step-by-step -step way, in a how-to guide, so that people get value out of those uh, models. And it's in uh, general better to create process models for a smaller part of your organization but have a clear usage scenario behind it so that you have real value and outcome, then modeling everything and then not uh, knowing what to do with it. So an approach to successful modeling starts with the identification and definition of the usage scenario, and then you can identify what content you need, which modeling methods, uh, 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 how you govern those uh, models, and what tools you use. Well, no, I appreciate that, and, and, and good advice for folks. I think, you know, as the importance uh, and focus becomes more and more on their uh, process maturity, folks are going to have to get beyond, you know, the modeling and, uh, and analyzation phase and start actually doing some in, improvement work uh, to be able to show those returns. I appreciate that, Matthias. And, and uh, can I also ask you to maybe uh, give us your thoughts on uh, BPM certification? and the importance that that might have in, in some of these initiatives. Yeah, uh, you see, I, I mentioned before that uh, process and process management uh, depends at the end uh, on people. And the big uh, problem uh, we have uh, still to fight with as uh, BPM practitioners is that everybody has a different uh, understanding. Uh, one person thinks, oh, if I do a lean initiative, uh, uh, that is BPM. Lean equals BPM. The next one thinks, okay, if I uh, yeah, implement my automation engine, uh, uh, that is uh, BPM. So BPM means uh, uh, automation. And uh, none of the two uh, is, of course, uh, the whole truth. Uh, if you see BPM as the, the management uh, uh, discipline that moves strategy to execution, then of course uh, uh, concepts like Lean or Six Sigma are part of it. But concepts like uh, 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 like uh, robotic process automation, like blockchain, uh, are also a part of it. And the, the real uh, BPM practitioner has to bring uh, those things together and to make sure that we think in a uh, 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 in a more consistent way about process and process management. I uh, think there is an educational uh, part uh, uh, required and that includes uh, certifications uh, like, uh, for example, uh, the PPN Institute uh, does and uh, uh, also others. And uh, uh, my experience is that it's uh, uh, very uh, helpful to get uh, people through such an uh, certification just to lay a, a common uh, basis uh, uh, to start from and uh, that's not uh, something uh, we only talk about, we do that uh, also ourselves, as you know, Craig. Yes, yes. Well, I think that, you know, that skills gap is something that uh, still exists, uh, but uh, we were continuing to work towards uh, building out a very robust uh, curriculum and, and our certification has been well received and uh, we'll continue to uh, put a lot of effort behind that.
But, uh, Matthias, I wanted to thank you so much for coming and talking to us uh, about your book. And in case folks want to know how to get in touch with you uh, after the webcast, uh, you can always follow uh, Matthias' uh, regularly uh, scheduled writings on BPM Institute. You can also uh, visit his website out at uh, BPMD, and, um, and uh, you'll also see a lot of industry activity. And, and Matthias is always very active at the industry events, so we look for him there. And then as we wrap up today's webcast, I just wanted to mention that uh, there are a few more opportunities this year. Um, if you're looking to jumpstart your BPM education, uh, we will be down in Washington, D.C. next week, and uh, we will wrap up our face-to-face uh, -face events uh, in New York City in early November. Uh, in addition to the BPM uh, training and certification offerings, uh, we've uh, done a lot of work with our catalog this year and introduced a lot of uh, new programs complementary to BPM and integrated with our BPM curriculum around agile business analysis, business architecture, operational excellence, and digital decisioning. And so uh, this is uh, an opportunity to get your plan in place for the rest of this year and going into 2018. But uh, Dr. Matthias, I want to thank you, uh, Matthias Kretschmer, so much for coming down and giving us a preview of your book. And uh, for our members who have sat and enjoyed the webcast, uh, thank you for participating. And we look forward to hosting you in another Meet the Author series in the near future.